there is a little practical joke that I like to do that involves whatever I happen to have handy, like a blanket or a pillow or a jacket. Of course, it's a warm day out. Do you mind if I borrow your jacket? Is that okay? It's perfect, actually. It's just the right color. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So I was doing a show several years ago on a college campus. When I showed up on campus, I discovered that I was coming down with a cold. I would have been troliquist as a cold. That's trouble. That means everybody in my act will have a cold, which is kind of <laughs> contagious that way. So I figured I should do something about that, and I decided to go over to the health center on campus, the student health center. Now, college campus student health centers all kind of have a reputation. They generally misdiagnose you. They really have no idea what you have. They just say you have mono. That kind of covers everything. And they treat you exactly the same no matter what you have. They give you a little bottle of Motrin and a bottle of cough syrup about that thing. It doesn't matter what you have. So I was expecting that. I walked in and I saw the receptionist. She hadn't seen me come in, so I thought I'd kind of have some fun, get warmed up for the show. Had a jacket, so I took the jacket, balled it up a little bit to give it some shape, and held on to it so that it looks something like this. <laughs> so this will be a little smaller, but you get the idea. So walked over into the line of sight of the receptionist, and she looked over at me and kind of smiled. Here's a guy with a baby, and I smiled back, kind of rocked a little bit. And as babies will often do, this baby got a little upset, and with the help of ventriloquism, of course, sounded something like this. <laughs> So what do you do with the baby that's crying? Now, I've watched mothers with babies, and I know one of the things that a mother will do when the baby cries is kind of bounce the baby up and down. I don't know why they do that. It just makes the baby get confused or something. <laughs> thought I'd try it. It didn't work very well, so I thought, okay, just kind of pat the baby on the back. I've watched mothers do that. Is she wasn't smiling as much. <laughs> so then I was just kind of talk to the baby. Mm, can you be quiet? Mm, please be quiet. Mm, can you be quiet? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the receptionist really thought that I had a baby. She looked over and she said, uh, Sir, the, the doctor will see you now. So as I walked by her little window. <laughs> Thanks for laughing. Because <laughs> yeah, she didn't laugh at all. Yeah, the receptionist, she looked at me, she said, that was not funny. <laughs> she said, no, seriously, I really, thought, I really thought it was a baby. You had me going. She said, when it went off your shoulder, I think I had a heart attack. <laughs> they heard her in back, came out and gave her a little bottle of Motrin and a bottle of cough syrup. <laughs> So I was recently flying on Southwest Airlines. If you've ever flown on Southwest, you know that there's no assigned seats. You just get on the plane, you can sit wherever you want, kind of like a bus. So I made my way to the exit row, was very excited. Nobody was in the exit row yet. A Little bit better seating, there's a little bit more leg room. And I had my jacket with me, so I had this crying baby on my lap as I was sitting there, which was great because nobody sat near me. <laughs> but the flight attendant came over and she said, sir, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to move. You can't have a baby in the exit row. She walked on by. Just open the overhead bin, threw the jacket up there. Got oh. <laughs> to keep my seat. <laughs> yeah, she came back and said, overhead bin. <laughs> All right, do you want this back? Here it comes. Okay. <laughs> well, I am uh, no exception to other ventriloquists that you may have seen, and that in fact I do have little people inside of these suitcases. Now you need to know that ventriloquists generally do not refer to them as dummies. That's not considered politically correct to call them dummies. So if we're, if we're going to be politically correct, we would refer to them as wooden Americans. <laughs> just, just keep that in mind. So I got a little guy down here. His name is Mac. What's going on, man? Here we go. Got a little show here. Okay, we go. Well. <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> well, we got a nice little crowd in here today. Not too bad. All right, let's see. Third, uh, th third row from the back right here on the end. Got a, a little 
little mountain uh, thing on your t-shirt. You know, hey, how you doing, sir? All oh, right. What's your name? Shannon. Say it again. Shannon. Shannon. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> so where are you from, Shannon? Right here in West Virginia. I'm sorry? No, I heard you. Just sorry. <laughs> right here in Charleston? Yep. Well, right, there you go, Shannon. What do you do in Charleston? I uh, work for an engineering company. Engineering company. Well, la ti <laughs> Are you an engineer yourself? I am not. Well, and what do you do for the engineering company? Design. Well, you gotta be kind of a smart guy to do that kind of thing, Shannon. Okay. Oh, you know. <laughs> Shannon, you know what? what? You're talking to a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> That's a smart guy, man. <laughs> All right, well, we're here for everybody, of course, uh, and we're going to be demonstrating for them, like I said before, a little bit of my ability as a ventriloquist. As you know, I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're a ventriloquist, huh? <laughs> no, the word is ventriloquist. What did I say? No, we didn't say ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. <laughs> It's ventriloquist. That's what I said. Say it again. Ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. <laughs> Sound it out. Yeah. Sound it out like this. Then. What? <laughs> Repeat after me. Then. Then. Good. Trill. Trill. O. O. Quist. Quist. Ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. <laughs> All right, let's try it a little faster. Huh? Faster. Then. Then to trill. August list. <laughs> then to trill. August list. <laughs> I can't help it, man. It's like it's that one word. It's hard for me to say. You know, it's the shiny floor like they had in the kitchen. You know what I'm talking about? The shiny Shannon. You know what I'm talking about? What is it? Floor? You have no idea, do you? <laughs> yeah, the wheel is turning, but the hamster is missing. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you... You said the shiny floor in the kitchen. You know, le, 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 le. oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, you know this. It's linoleum. Ah, say linoleum. Le, 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 le. <laughs> linoleum. Sound it out. Yeah. Like this. Len. Len. No. No. Lee. Lee. Um. Um. Len. Len. No. No. Lee. Um. Um. Len. No. No. Lee. Um. Um. Linoleum. Then <laughs> <laughs> All right, I thought we'd start off by having you like sing a little song. Uh, how about you? Sing a little song. You gotta be kidding me. Do you sing? I sing a little. I hear you. You're gonna hear me. Uh. <clears throat> okay. La 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 la. Singers do run in my family. Yeah, they should. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a, a fairly decent uh, voice, a pretty good range. I sing high C, I sing middle C, you sing low C. <laughs> I suppose you can do better. I can. Let me hear your voice. Just sing. Mo. Just like that. Mo. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. And you look like a geek. <laughs> I don't want to. Come on. I don't want to. Come on. I don't want to. <laughs> your name back here. <laughs> Where's my name? <laughs> turn your head around. What? Turn, turn your head around, please. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Can you turn your head around? I can't. Why not? It's stuck. <laughs> so, want me to help if you like? Okay, here we go. Ready? Are you ready? Um, a little lower. What? Lower. Lower? Yeah. Okay. How's that? Don't say anything, just kiss me. Don't stop. <laughs> What's that on your neck? I'm sure it's, it's nothing. It's a freckle. It's crawling. <laughs> hey, your freckle has a friend. <laughs> Ready? 
Ah, oh, okay. There we go. Just more. All right. I'm just gonna clear my throat. Yeah, that's in bad taste. I know. That's why I got rid of it. Hey, Shannon. Don't touch it. That's mine. Yeah, he's not. Go ahead. Ball. All right. Ball. Again. Ball. <clears throat> a, a little higher. Huh? No, a, a, a little bigger. What? Bigger. Bigger. Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe a little higher. Ball. Higher. Ball. Higher. Ball. I'm nuts. All right, when you sing, your voice is going to ring like a bell. Have a nice tone to it, kind of ring like a bell. All right. <clears throat> I don't hear the bell. Hey, the bell's busted and using a buzzer. <laughs> Let's just pick out a song and sing. All right, you might not know this, but I'm actually well, I'm kind of the songwriter. And I have just rotten a song. <laughs> it's written, not rotten. You haven't heard the song yet. <laughs> this is called Bigger Isn't Better. Just because someone is, well, bigger than you are doesn't mean they're any better. So I wrote this song just for you. Right. Bigger isn't better. Uh -huh. Sounds like it has lots of the... Uh, <clears throat> The B sound in it. Yeah. It's one of the more difficult letters, actually, for a ventriloquist. <clears throat> Bigger isn't better. That's the idea. Okay. <laughs> Here is my song. Watch his mouth. Uh -oh. <laughs> my name is Mac. This is Jade. You'll notice he's the tall one. I may be sure. To misbehave, at least I'm not the dull one. <laughs> Dave, I'll issue nothing up in your eyes. What do you mean? Don't judge nothing just by shape or size. <laughs> Bigger isn't better, taller isn't braver, stronger isn't always wise. Smaller isn't necessarily the lesser. Guts can come in any size. See the mighty lion sitting there and crying, bitten by a tiny flea. Mammoth was colossal. What's he now a fossil? Bet she life, I'm glad I'm the. I see what you mean. Oh, yeah. The dinosaurs no more. Uh -huh. The dear old dodo is dead. That's right. But right there on that floor, some animals still be treading after Armageddon. Armageddon? It rhymes. <laughs> Bigger isn't keener, larger isn't bolder, higher might be low inside. When you need to lean on a friendly shoulder, narrow's just as good as wide. Giants look so awesome, folks are scared to cross them, nonetheless a guarantee. Smallest Yankee noodle, if he's in the noodle, beat the whole cup poodle, use him just as noodle. So we got Graham and 
and uh, what is your name? Say it again. Ethan. How you doing, Ethan? What's up? <laughs> okay, Graham, I want you. You're going to stand up here on top of that bench right there. Just so we can see you eye to eye. There you go. Come on over a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Graham, you're not scared of me, are you? That's good. That's good. You ever heard of Chucky? <laughs> Graham, you know what I look like when I get scared? Like this. <laughs> All right, Ethan, are you still with me? Come on over there a little closer. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to read your mind. <laughs> Just like a book, I can read your mind. Now, in Shannon's case down here, it's more like a pamphlet. <laughs> Paper bag. Yes. Do you need it? Yes, I do. Ethan, could you hand me that paper bag? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my head around so that I can't see. But just so you know, there is no hanky panky going on. <laughs> David here is going to put this bag on my head. Then. We're going to have Ethan go into the audience and choose an object out of the audience. They're going to hand that object to Graham. You're going to hold that object up. Then I'm going to tell you what that object is without looking at it. <laughs> Graham, do you think I can do that? You got a lot of confidence in me, Graham. What do you think, Ethan? You think I can read your mind like that? All right, we're gonna give it a try. Here we go. Just gonna turn my head around, just like this. All right. Ain't that neat? <laughs> Graham, can you do that? Try it. <laughs> You almost had it. Okay, here we go. Just like this. All right. Now, David. Yes. Put the bag on my head. Okay. Put the paper bag on your head. All right. Got it. Now, uh, was it Ethan? Yeah. Okay, what, what do you want him to do? Pick an object. Say what? Pick an object. Did you hear what he said, Grant? What did he say? Pick an object. Oh, pick an object. Thank you. I was having trouble understanding him, so I appreciate your help. Thank you for that. The rest of you are taking this way too seriously. So, um, <laughs> so Ethan, we need you to uh, get an, an object of some type, something that Graham could perhaps hold up, uh, get an object out of the audience, and somebody maybe in the audience could, uh, you know, ha hold something up that Ethan could grab. Whatever you think, Ethan. Go ahead and see what you can grab out of the audience and then bring it on up here. All right, looks like he's making his way back to something, but we don't want to say what it is. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Looks like he's... chosen an object. What would you like him to do? Well, hand the object to Graham. Oh yes, he's already handed it to Graham. <laughs> uh, what else would you like him to do? Hold the object up. Yeah, he's, he's holding it way up. Maybe if you just hold it right here, like this, so everybody can see and yeah, so on, just like that. All right, great. And is it, you know what, let's do it like this. So maybe, there you go. 
going on? Nothing. Okay, so what else do you want him to do? Concentrate on the object. Say what? Concentrate on the object. Did you hear what he said? What did he say? Oh, concentrate. Okay, right. Once again, I was having trouble understanding him. So he was helping me out. Did you catch that? Okay, so we, you know, we're going to concentrate on the object. Thinking about the object. Okay, so Mac, I think you've had plenty of time to come up with the object. Can you tell us what the object is? Yes, I can. You can. And it's going to be hard. What do you think the object is? I think it is a crutch. Say it again. A crutch. A crutch. We do. That's amazing. What's that? There's what? A hole in the back. So you mean to tell me that he looked through the hole? Ethan, is that true? So what you're telling me is that the way that this was accomplished is that he cheated, is that right? Let's take a look here. It's, oh, sure enough, there is a hole in the middle. <laughs> well, Graham, obviously I can't get anything past you. <laughs> you know what, Graham? You're a very smart young man. Yes, you are. Someday, Graham, I'd say you have a great future ahead of you, working as a designer in an engineering firm. <laughs> uh, Graham has actually been fantastic. And I think that both of these guys deserve to have a little something, a little souvenir, memento for coming up here. I'd say so, and uh, you know what, Graham, just coming up here, you can keep that crutch. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ethan, where did you get that crutch? From a girl back there. Oh, okay, do you have another one? Because that can go to Ethan. And then you have one. Now, I think that we need to get the crutch back to her. I have a feeling that she is going to need it. Yeah. So, uh, actually, if you want to go ahead and take that back, then you can return it. But don't do it just yet, Ethan. Okay, go ahead and do that, and then come on back up here. Actually, we do have something for both you and Ethan, and it's right down here on the floor right there. If you want to go ahead and pick them both up, one for you, one for Ethan. Guys, that's a DVD of my whole show, and you can take that back and share with your family and friends. Thank you so much for coming up there. So, Ethan, who brought you to the show tonight, today, this afternoon? Who is that? Is that Grandpa? Is that right? Is that is that Grandpa back there? Yes. Oh, uh, Grandpa. Just so you know, uh, there's a table back in the uh, where you came in. Well, we had those DVDs on the table, and so you can stop back there, and that's where you can pay for that DVD. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally fine. All right, you know what, I, I, I brought somebody else along with us here tonight, uh, this afternoon, that I thought everybody might enjoy seeing. He happens to be inside the suitcase right here. His name is Buford. I can't stand Buford. You don't like Buford? No. And why is that? Buford is a dog. Yes, Buford is a dog. I can't stand dogs. And why is that? I used to be a tree. <laughs> Spirits. <laughs> <laughs> well, Beaver here is a nice dog that I that everybody might enjoy seeing. Here we go. Let's bring one up. Makes 
me sick. <laughs> I knew you were dead. <laughs> you doing well? <laughs> oh, it makes you think of Shannon, don't it? <laughs> All right, Buford, I want you to be in your best behavior here today. If someone speaks to you, you say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. You got that? <laughs> Don't you mean yes, sir? <laughs> Can you say anything besides yep? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> now, isn't that better? <laughs> How about telling everybody what kind of a dog you are? <laughs> what kind of dog am I? Going to throw up. <laughs> Do you have a pedigree? No, uh, no, the master cut it off. <laughs> Wait, do you mean your master cut off perhaps your tail? <laughs> cut off your tail. Yep. Doesn't that kind of spoil your carriage? Uh, no, the church stop my wagon. Oops. <laughs> Yes, he sounded a little slow, but they get Are you a spitz? Uh, no, but I drool a little. Okay. What was your mother? A female. What was your father? Just another dog. Do you have a family tree? No, no, any old tree will do. Guys, I thought we'd do a little song here, a little uh, number called Ragmop. It goes R A G G M O P P, Ragmop. Remember that old ragtime song? And I thought, Mac, like, you sing the song. What? You sing the song. And be for <laughs> everything Mac sings, you're going to repeat after him. We're going to go back and forth between the two of you really fast. R A G G M O P P, Ragmop. Watch the M's and the P's. Those are the more difficult letters. Got it? All right, I get it. Okay. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> go ahead. I say M-O, M-O, and O-P, and O-P, and O-P-P, and O-P-P, mom, mom, and O-P-P, mom, 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 R, or, I say R-A, R-A, R-A-G, R-A-G, R-A-G-G, R-A-G-G, right, right, R-A-G-G, and O-P-P, right, mom, to lay on your arm, right, mom, to lay on your arm, right, mom, to lay on your arm, you can do the doodly yada yada part next time. Thank you. Try the other part. Yeah. 
Uh-oh. What are you talking about? I'm in locked up. Really? Well, what do you mean? I've been in trouble with the law. Yeah, Shannon knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> What do you mean? What happened? You want to know? I do. All right, I'll tell you. You see, I was just minding my own business. Yeah. Out standing in the side of the barn, and some guy came running into the barn. The guy could have looked like Shannon, actually. <laughs> he came in, he said, hey, I'm, on, uh, I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm in big trouble. You gotta hide me. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I don't have time to explain. You're just going to hide me. So I said, all right. You go out into that field. There's a barrel out in that field. You can get down in that barrel and hide in there. So he did. After a couple of minutes, in came the police. The who? The police. <laughs> the punk po <laughs> Charleston 5-0. Okay. <laughs> He came in, he said, hey, I'm on a hot pursuit. Did you see someone come running in here? I said, no, sir, I didn't. And then that police get in my face. He said, son, you see what I got on my shirt right there? I said, yeah, jelly from the donut. <laughs> he said, now, right there is a badge. What? A badge. A badge. A badge. He said, now, that badge means you got to listen to me. That badge means I'm the law. That badge means I got authority. Now I'm gonna ask you one more time. Did you see someone come running in here? I said, yes sir, I did. I said, he went out to that field and so that police went out to that field and he didn't know that field was a great big mean bull. Uh -oh. Yeah, that bull started to chase him. He ran back up to the barn. I shut the barn door. He started pounding on that barn door, saying, hey man, open the door. This bull is after me. I said, hey, show him your badge. <laughs> yes, I got locked up. <laughs> Did some hard time, too. They put me in a cell with Mike Tyson. Oh, Did you cell with Mike Tyson? Oh, yeah, I survived it all right, but I developed a nervous twitch. <laughs> nervous twitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of you get that. <laughs> all right, I'm going to put you back in. All right, be careful. She's going to... Hey, Shannon, I'll catch you later on. <laughs> all right, here we go. Just going to turn you around. What? Just going to turn you around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now what? Just going to put your feet next to your ears. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> it's gonna hurt just for something on that. Wow, wow, man, double hernia. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> well, I brought somebody else along with me here tonight, uh, this afternoon. I thought you might enjoy. This is somebody that's kind of become a little bit of the favorite in my act, especially among older audiences. Her name is Aunt Tilly. <laughs> well, I see a ride at home here. <laughs> Checking out the audience. Oh my goodness, is that you, Shannon? <laughs> Well, how are you doing tonight? Well, I'm all right. I can sit up and take nourishment. Well, that's good. Yeah, at least I'm on the green side of the sod. That's what they say. I had a little cough the other day, but I'm doing better now. You had a cough? Mm -hmm. I see. What'd you do for it? I went to the doctor. Okay. What'd the doctor do for you? He gave me a laxative. <laughs> Doctor gave you a laxative for a cough. Mm -hmm. Did it help? Oh my, yes. Now I'm afraid to cough. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor gave me a laxative and some Prozac. A 
relaxative and Prozac. Yeah, so I've been going to the John a lot, but I'm feeling good about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Has made me kind of irregular. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's just, it's embarrassing. When you talk about that sort of stuff publicly, it's what they call TMI. Too much information. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What else am I going to talk about? <laughs> sure. sure, you'll come up with something. <laughs> you know, normally I'm very regular. <laughs> Seven o'clock every morning. All right, tell me, look, that's great. Well, that's bad. That's bad? I don't get up till eight. <laughs> All right, I will change the subject. How about telling everybody how old you are? Well, I'm 94. 94. That's right. Miss America, 1933. <laughs> of course, back then, there are a lot less Americans. <laughs> I used to have an hourglass figure, now the sands of time have gone down a bit. It's later than you think. Now I have the old furniture disease. The old furniture disease? Mm -hmm. And what is that? My chest done dropped into my drawers. <laughs> you laugh, it's not funny. <laughs> I'd say you look very nice. Thank you, honey. It seems to me you have a million dollar figure. Oh, I got a million dollar figure, but it's all in loose change. <laughs> I have been working out a little bit. Been working out? Yeah, I picked up one of those exercise videos at the Christian bookstore. Exercise video mm -hmm. at the Christian bookstore. Mm -hmm. What's it called? It's called But for the Grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> it's been working out. Okay. Have you ever been married? I've never been married. No. No. Darn it, no. No, I'm still looking. Oh. Oh, well, there's a young man. I've uh, got kind of the plaid shirt on right back of blue and black, I think it is. Yes, uh, hi, honey. Stand up, I want to see you. What's your name, honey? Braden? Braden? Yeah. Well, how old are you, Braden? 17. Oh, well, I can wait. <laughs> <laughs> You're not married, are you, honey? No. Well, I'm available. <laughs> yeah. You're a nice looking fella. Oh, don't thank me. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of creepy, ain't it? <laughs> Brain's a little young for you. He's 17 till you're 94. You know, even when he's older, if the two of you got married, it could be fatal. <laughs> well, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> Look at him now, you know, let's see, there's a fella, third row uh, back here, got his arms crossed, uh, he had a green shirt on, hi honey. Yes, and what is your name? Mike. Mike, come on up here. <laughs> Step on up, honey. Nice to see you, Mike. Well, thank you. Mike, I wanted to sing you a song. Can I do that? Okay. All right, now come a little closer. Okay. I'm just going to sit down on your shoulder. All right. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so you're going you're gonna to sing a song to Mike? Is that true? Don't push it up. Hold, Hold still, honey. What are you doing? I'm just checking my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, Mike. I feel a cough coming on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You gonna be all right? Well, depends. <laughs> okay. Like the 
other day I was in to see that doctor, I told it on and had in some episodes. Episodes. A silent gas. <laughs> I did, I said, Doc, right here in your office. I had a little episode. A silent gas. I said, what should I do about it? He said, first thing you ought to do is get your hearing checked. <laughs> <laughs>
Romans 6.23 goes on to say that the wages or the penalty of sin is death. In other words, spiritual separation from God, such that there is nothing that we can do to have a relationship with Him in and of ourselves. We can't be good enough people. We can't be moral enough people. We can't even be religious enough people because of this problem of sin that has separated us from Him and has left us, frankly, hopeless. But fortunately, God does not leave us in this condition, but has in fact given us the way to have a relationship with Him. And that He has done in the gift of His Son, Jesus, who has lived out a completely sinless life and then gone to the cross and paid the death penalty for sin that you and I owe, he has taken that upon himself in our place. He's not only died on the cross, but he's risen again from the dead, demonstrating to us that he is in fact who we claim to be, that he is God in the flesh. And he invites us to place our faith or our trust in him. And when we do, he's promised that he would come into our lives, fill our lives, and make us the people that he's created us to be. Jesus put it like this. He said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him will bear fruit, have a fruitful life. But apart from me, says Jesus, you can do nothing. But when we place our faith and our trust in him, he's promised that he would literally come to live in us and through us. And that restores to us the very purpose for which we were created the relationship with God that we were intended to have in the first place. I'm going to have Aunt Tilly sing an old hymn right now. This is a, tim a hymn that I remember hearing my grandmother sing years ago. It's probably my favorite hymn, but it's a hymn that I hardly ever hear sung anymore. But this is kind of how I remember my grandmother singing this old hymn. So Yeah. <laughs> 
Then they'll pay with puppets. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cockatoo. I'm a bullshit puppet boy. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm great. Oh, really? What do vultures usually eat? Roll pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I know that vultures are scavengers and well, they roadkill and that sort of thing, but uh, Vern, I thought we could... Uh... <coughs> you staring at someone? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Who are you staring at? Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> why are you staring at him? Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shannon. What? Come here. <laughs> why, why are you bringing Shannon up here? Got an idea. Oh, really? What is that? You, Shannon, as the dummy. <laughs> Use him as the dummy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, if I do that, I need to put you back inside the case. All right. Hang on, just one second. Oh, don't put it in here. Sorry about that. <laughs> What's wrong? He bit me. Vern, don't do that. Thought she was dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, I, I wouldn't want to put you too much on the spot here, Sharon. So, you know, I brought, I brought this along here. Is this your wife and uh, is yeah. the daughter down there as well? Oh, two, two daughters. Okay, great. Looks like they brought a friend along as well. So, great. So, uh, uh -oh. yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> I'm gonna just kind of stand right, yeah, it's right there on the trap. That's right, perfect. That was it. Here we go. <laughs> so, uh, so how you doing today? excited to be here. Oh, hey guys, yeah, you had no idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad I came to this show today. Yeah. And I'm so glad I sat so close to the front row. <laughs> well, I am glad you came to the show too. Yeah, I'm so glad I wore my nice white shorts. <laughs> Very nice. So, uh, so what? What are you doing? I'm just fixing that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sure thing. You know, I told you that I work for an engineering firm. An, yes, an engineering company? Yeah, as a designer. Yeah. But I've always kind of had a secret dream. Uh-oh. Really? And what is that? To be in show business. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> and now look, here I am. <laughs> This is like a dream come true. Well, I'm so glad you're so excited. You, you had no idea. God, I know. So what are you going to do for us tonight? I'm so glad you asked. Yeah? I'm going to sing a song. <laughs> but I'm not only going to sing, I'm also going to dance. <laughs> like no Baptist has ever danced before. <laughs> because after all, yeah. there is no business like show business. See you? There's no business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything that traffic will allow. Now what can you get that empty feeling? That one you're stealing, that extra now. There's no people like show. People they smile when they are low. Yesterday they told you you 